So hello and welcome to another Feature Friday. So I'm John Q. Todd. I'm one of the senior business consultants here at TRM. So let me begin by assuming that you have some method to record the failures and downtime periods that your equipment experiences. Doesn't matter how you do it or what kind of software you use. What matters is that the fact that you are capturing this information and the degree of detail that you capture. So why does it matter, this seemingly obvious information that you would capture over time? Well, at the very least, it's useful for basic reliability analyses. At the end of this video, I'll also show you another powerful benefit as well. So let's begin with failure reporting. It's very important to focus the failure report down to the specific piece of equipment that experienced the failure. While it seems obvious, you need to provide your team with a clear list of the equipment that you wish these kinds of reports to be made against. Don't leave them guessing. Equipment tag numbers, barcodes, QR codes, and other methods of identification are immensely helpful. And also, having a location defined for the equipment is important as well. So your next step would be to create a list of failures that your teams can agree upon and is the only source of failure selections. This needs to be a reasonable list that's not too long, yet describes most issues your team may run into. This list may come from an FMEA, maybe that you've done in the past, or some other failure library source, maybe from an RCM study. Avoid options that are non-committal, miscellaneous, not applicable, other, those aren't useful. Use codes for shorthand, but make sure that there's a good description nearby. Dates are very important. Specifically, knowing the timestamp, date and time, that a failure was reported or began to impact production is the most critical. While it might be nice to have a failure report go through a verification process of some kind, assuming the failure was real, knowing when it happened, that is key. Yes, of course, editorial comments and other information, logs and such can be useful, but not necessarily required. So failure reports are just that. What failed, how, and when. That's all they need to be. Downtime reports are a little different. They can be a little more involved. But keep in mind, they don't need to be associated with a failure. Be sure they also start with selecting a specific piece of equipment that experienced the downtime. Use that same list that you did for failures. Then define a list of what kinds of downtime could exist. This should, could be a very short list non-operational, resting, maintenance period, that sort of thing. This is a way of classifying the downtime for future analysis. Again, keep in mind, downtime reports do not have to be associated with failures. Then create another list to describe the reasons for the downtime. Failure and maintenance may be obvious ones, there can be others. Then we come back to dates and timestamps again, but with some added detail. We need to know approximately when the downtime began and how long it lasted. That could be a start time, an end time, a start time and a duration, however you wish to record it. Don't forget to include troubleshooting and restart times. Those times can play a role in the total of Quote, downtime. Capture every hour that the equipment is not producing. Failure and downtime reports and their related data are very useful in performing basic reliability calculations. Mean time between failure is the obvious one, and there are many others. But on the next slide is where they're going to be the most valuable and kind of the point of this video. So finally, we're going to get serious about why these reports are so important. So this is a probability chart that shows the 
probability of failure for a particular piece of equipment. It has seven years of telemetry that has been captured. The blue periods are normal operations. The white periods are known downtimes based on the data. And the red are developing and occurred failures of a specific type. The longer white periods do associate to actual downtime reports. The dotted yellow lines are actual failure reports. Here's the gold. These reports are used to verify the failure signature that is being observed in the sensor data. So now you have the full picture. Not only does the telemetry data show impending failures, but your historical failure and downtime reports verify what the data is bringing out. So in case you're wondering what this tool is all about, it's called Aspen MTEL. It's a new product line that TRM is involved in. So go to the TRM website listed in the description for more information and let us know if you'd like to know more. Thanks so much and have a great weekend.